burst out. I have followed Tom and his concern for Samson for so long. I just knew we had to help. I knew you could help, he added. You did say I might see Al, said Jack to Tess with a grin. But Tess was two moves ahead in thought by then. She knew Al too well. And if she was responsible for this introduction, for her to meet Tom, it meant just one thing. It meant Owl had a plan to save Samson. She must have. Just as she had a plan to save Fox and a plan to save Badger. Surely now, with her magic Owl ways, she had a plan to save Samson, the tired lion. Tessa's flash thoughts were interrupted. Do you know Owl, Tess? Tom Tomcat asked. Owl knew exactly what Tess had just been thinking, and Tess saw her smile as she replied. Yes, Tom, I do. Would you believe she helped me find my missing wag when I was a puppy? Tom was soon answering, asking questions about herself and his newfound friends. He explained to them that he never knew his father and only had a treasured memory of his real mother's warmth and care. But... He loved as his own his adopted mother and sister, the family who he grew up with in the broken down buildings and factories of Glasgow. Tom asked Tess if the fox hunt story was true, and then he wanted to know from Jack if the cats in the city were right about Tess and the deal she made with the city foxes and the stray dogs. As the stories unfolded, he began to realise why information about Tess had been so guarded. She was loved and protected by so many animals. As soon as, he, as she could, Tess found time for a quiet moment alone with Owl. You have got this all planned, haven't you, Owl? Oh, tell me, I know you must have. After the pause, Tess was right. But when Al began to explain just how they would free and rehome a fully grown lion, she began to think that Al had finally gone stark raving mad. Tess had a thousand questions about the plan, but Al had only one for Tess. Do you trust me, Tess? You see, Sometimes you have to have faith that something can happen in order to make it happen. I can't save Samson, the tired lion, without you. But together we can, right or wrong. Trust me, Tess? What about Tom? Asked Tess. Yes, he reminds me of you in a lot of ways. He knows nothing of the plan I've just told you. But do not underestimate him. His love for the tide line is so strong because this is about him, Tess. Samson has become his greatest weakness. A wild animal cannot afford to show compassion, yet at the same time it has made him stronger because in showing his weakness he has also shown us his strength. Tess, I have known Tom since he was born. I have always watched over him. I helped his mother to evade capture for months in the highlands of Scotland. His father was as dear to me as you are. Tess gasped. You knew Tom's father? Yes, Tess, I'll state it. He was the bravest cat I have ever known. Until now, maybe. You already know Tom is part of our special family, don't you? Tess knew exactly what Al meant. Even though the two spikes were protecting her, as soon as she had seen Tom... She had felt his kindness towards her. Tess turned slowly away from Hal and looked at Tom through the thicket. Tom was already becoming good friends with his two spikes and Jack. She turned towards Al. Can we really do this, Al? Al looked her in the eye. Yes, Tess. That night, Tess's brain was in a whirl with the plan that Al had made had made to rescue and rehome Samson the Tired Circus Lion. It appeared to be brilliant, but she had to go over every detail in triplicate. 
Just one thing worried her, but she set this aside for now, and settling into her favourite sleeping position, she drifted off into a lovely, coma-like deep sleep. The next day was an annoying, rainy, rainy, rainy one. Tess had agreed to meet Tom and Owl in the morning, before meeting up with Jack and the two Spikes later in the afternoon to explain the plan of action. Knowing her friends, she felt sure they would help, but they needed to know the risks. Tess set off early for her meeting with Tom and Owl. The rain was still pouring down, and when she got to the meeting point, she was soaked through. Not, however, as soaked as the large black tomcat she saw wearing a not very happy, handsome tomcat face. As they waited for Owl, Tom told Tess some grave news. When he had returned to the circus the night before, Samson was in a very bad way. He hasn't eaten for two days now, Tess. It's breaking my heart. They just don't seem to care. Tess moved forward and put her nose under the face of her new friend. Two more days, Tom, she reassured him. Owl has it all planned. Just two more days. You have to tell Samson to hang on. Looking on from a medium-high branch during this chat was, of course, Owl. She wanted to see the two new friends without her presence felt. Now, as she swooped down to join the two allies, she was certain in her heart that her plan would work. Tess is right, Tom, said Al, as she landed on a lower branch. Now is the time to tell Samson that in two days he will have a lovely new, safe life in a beautiful safari park, I promise. Tom the Tomcat was speechless for a second. A safari park? Tess and Owl explained about a lioness who was being transferred from a safari park just outside of London to another which was only 10 miles or so from the circus. They then went into the details of how they were going to get Samson out of the circus and onto the lorry containing the lioness which was heading for the safari park. At one point Tom stood up and paced around as if he couldn't quite believe what he was hearing. This is mad, he gasped. What about the paperwork saying one lion? What about the lion and the lorry? What about... Tess interrupted him. Sit down, Tom, she said, trying to calm him down. There won't be any paperwork. We have all that taken care of, and the lioness in the lorry will be very heavily sedated. We know all about her. You have to trust Owl, Tom, please. I'll turn to Tom. Can I tell you a story, Tom? Tomcat? She took a deep breath and started. This is a story of the bravest tomcat in all of Scotland. You see, Tom, I have known you since before you were born. Your father and I were the closest of friends. He would visit me just like Tess has done in the past, with problems just like Tess. Well, one day your father told me about a beautiful wild cat he had met. The cat had gorgeous, exotic markings, and he found out that she was an ocelot. She was being kept in a cage by a very rich, unkind American who collected wild animals and wild cats in particular. Your father had a dream to free that ocelot, and Tom, I have to tell you, that ocelot was your mother. With the help of friends, we did manage to rescue her and she lived happily in freedom with your father for many years. After some time you were born, and it was all so lovely, until one day your mother was spotted by a gamekeeper or visitor. Your father fought off three dogs, but it was no use, Tom, and your mother was killed. They said they thought she, were, she was a dangerous animal. Your father saw it all, and I can only imagine this hurt, his grief, and yet, even after seeing the love of his life taken away from him, he managed to escape the savagery and take the one thing left him he loved more than himself. You, Tom, saved it to his friends in the city. They brought you up, loved you, just like you were their own family. Tom, look at your unusual tummy markings. Did you ever wonder where they came from? 
To most you look like a very big tomcat, but underneath you have the markings of an ocelot. The markings that killed your mother, she left them with you. It's safely out of sight. Al took a deep breath. Tom, let's do this for Samson, but also for your mum. Tom was close to tears. Why didn't anyone tell me? Al replied. Well, by the time they thought you were ready to know the truth, you had already left Glasgow for a life on your own. Your stepmom and your sister Mitzi both miss you so much, Tom. They waited for you to return to visit, but you never did. But they knew you were safe because I sent them regular messages about how you were doing. Tom's heart felt very heavy. Oh, Al, I thought about returning so many times, but something always got in the way, and then when I met Samson, I just knew I had to stay with him. I'm all he's got. Tess moved towards Tom to snuggle with the big cat. I have to go meet Jack and the two spikes, she said softly. I'll let Owl tell you how we get Samson's cage open while I'm gone. She cast a glance of good luck up to her wise, feathered friend.